Business Briefing for 2021. Uh, we are going to be talking about the first half results for 2021. Um, uh, I have a brief uh, presentation. Uh, I will go over it. Uh, and uh, please, uh, you can uh, uh, you send in your questions. And we can take the questions uh, towards the end. Uh, I think uh, that will be more conducive uh, from an administrative point of view. Um, so I'll start um, now. I think there are enough um, participants in the meeting, and inshallah, more will join as I go along. So if I move to um, the beginning slide, uh, and I'll talk, I'll start with the business highlight. And uh, so, you know, the big business highlight, I think, uh, and there will be questions on that. Uh, I'm sure all of uh, all of you have questions uh, uh, about uh, what has happened in the budget. Um, so it hasn't affected um, the results for the first half. But I think let's start with that because it has an impact on our business. And we are very happy with this, uh, uh, this uh, development which has happened on the fiscal front. So the biggest news is that zero rating has uh, has been uh, allowed to us by the government in this budget. And what we feel uh, uh, the result of this is that it's going to spark a conversion of from loose milk, uh, which we all know is uh, unhygienic uh, and not good for uh, the health, uh, into safe and uh, nutritious milk that we supply. Uh, it's going to give us a space to invest uh, in behind uh, uh, the conversion. And we are going to, uh, on this basis, we are going to grow our business, not just uh, Freestone Campina, but the whole dairy industry. Uh, we are going to convert um, more and more into our uh, business, into the uh, safe dairy of milk. And this is going to, of course, uh, pay back to uh, uh, the government as well in terms of increased revenue. Uh, increase uh, through increasing uh, collection of taxes, and that uh, you know I think is the, is a very sustainable model to grow this business. Uh, if I move forward from this uh, very good news uh, and further develop uh, on that, you can see that uh, you know till 2016 uh, the industry had uh, uh, enjoying the benefits of zero rating, and you can see the growth of the industry. This is not Freestone Campina, but entire industry. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, but 2016, uh, in the 2016 budget, uh, zero rating was taken away. And for milk, we moved to uh, the, the uh, uh, exchange. Uh, and, uh, and eventually, uh, some of our portfolio also moved into the sales taxable regime. So you can see over the years, over the four years, post that um, change. Uh, how the industry volume. The green area is uh, what the industry feels, how we are going to grow into a higher, you know, uh, volume. And uh, so that's uh, that's our um, estimate, the industry's estimate. Uh, we haven't put any numbers to it because, you know, it's, it's directional and we don't want to talk about the future uh, numbers. Moving on. Um, Uh, this is just a recap of the discussions we've had many times in the past uh, with uh, uh, all of you. Uh, you know, household penetration in milk is 100%. So it's, it's a fully penetrating region, like some other categories in the, uh, in, in, in the fast-moving uh, area, fast-moving consumers' good area. Uh, that we know about this uh, is that 40% uh, of all budgets uh, are spent, uh, you know, based on various researches. You can see the sources at the bottom left. Forty percent of the household spend is spent uh, is is on food and beverages. So this is a very big portion of what uh, you know the average Pakistani invests their uh, or puts their money into. And twenty three percent of the entire food spend is on milk and related products. So you know, so, so it's a very key area on a on a on day-to-day -day basis for us. Uh, 
and and the pakistani average pakistani household consumes about 2 liters of milk every day and so you know there, there is a culture of uh, drinking milk and benefiting from uh, from the goodness of milk provided of uh, you know we are able to get good quality milk and not adulterated not um, uh, deteriorated milk that uh, quite uh, most of the time the loose milk uh, areas so that's uh, that's a key uh, uh, take out from that that it's a integral uh, part of the pakistani diet of course we have had a rich history of um, uh, and legacy of milk consumption we have a culture uh, uh, and you know not only we uh, you know it goes back thousands of years so it's a, it's a good um, uh, area to be in we love our tea we drink our milk and we believe uh, in the goodness of milk as pakistanis going on um, most of the milk 90% of the milk uh, in the country is unprocessed it's unsafe and uh, milk shops uh, deal in loose milk loose yogurt uh, and uh, or, you know and loose uh, loose milk supply chain is has got many many issues related to hygiene temperature uh, lack of temperature control and adulteration and if i move uh, forward now uh what you will see is uh, yeah uh that you know this uh, uh, the total milk uh, that is uh, traded in pakistan is about 25 billion liters so it's a lot of um, uh, you know here for to convert it's a huge market and the size uh, of the pie that we are uh, we have is is quite large uh, and should go um yeah so and and all this of course now uh, you know it tells it right uh, very well with our uh, with our purpose and mission of president campaign in uh, that I, i'll just uh, read it out for you because it is very important for us that we will transform the health and well-being of pakistanis now and for generations to come by nourishing them through unlocking the goodness to grass to glass as well as by enhancing the livelihood of farmers okay yeah uh, if i if i move uh, forward so uh, we will talk about our our strategy as well uh, now this is something that uh, uh, the uh, the pakistan dairy association is investing in it has invested for the last two years and uh, because of the space created by the zero rating we we intend to as as an industry ramp up this investment and advocate uh, you know uh, and invest behind advocacy uh, pakistan medical association and uh, uh, the team uh, that uh, the pakistanis pakistani people uh, should have access to safe milk to high they are supporting us we have also got uh, as as an industry we will to uh, get advocacy from the uh, a number of celebrity anchors from the uh, tv channels and this has become uh, recently on television a uh, hot topic uh, uh, on news and on news and um, talk shows uh, this will of course because of the space that has been provided to us by the government as an industry you will see uh, more of this uh, in in the times to come if i move forward to uh, the next chart uh let's talk about uh, mel what have we done in the area of alpers uh, uh, as a company uh, we continue to own the morning and breakfast um, uh, spots uh, so uh, this space uh, is uh, you know we're talking about our uh, happy subha uh, space uh milk uh, is is consumed to a large extent in the morning and uh, we are driving this sustainability consistently on that um as far as um, uh, uh, new new launches new formats are concerned we have launched a 50 rupee pouch packaging it, it's uh, relatively more economical than our um, uh, brick packaging or our uh, uh, box packaging and it provides the same quality uh, wonderful quality of milk 
and it, it gives you um, uh, you know the same quality at a cheaper uh, level so this is now being uh, you know uh, we are looking at this format to uh, launch uh, and scale up uh, eventually to a larger uh, audience uh, as far as um, the uh, as far as the uh, in store area is concerned so we are investing into um, the displays so making our product more visible and making it uh, you know uh, more available increasing our coverage in terms of number of shops uh, uh, more prominent displays uh, our uh, alpert screen uh, has been uh, a wonderful um, uh, addition to our uh, our category our portfolio uh, this is a uh, you know, invested again uh, on the morning platform happy morning happy subha platform we've also um, uh, the huge marketing um, uh, uh, program uh, collaborating with uh, digital food channels and uh, tv uh, food programs and a number of recipes have come out and this has really uh, fueled the growth for the, uh, this uh, category we have also launched a smaller sku of 125 uh, more accessible in terms of pricing so we are feeling very um, happy with the growth that we are getting on this it's been a very high growth and you know that uh, that is margin equitative it's got a margin and uh, very happy with that uh, moving to um, our flavored milk uh, so again uh, you added uh, launch um, value added uh, a part of our portfolio uh, we have uh, uh, it's uh, it's growing uh, very fast albeit at a smaller on a smaller scale um, you know startup um, we have invested into um, making it available in the stores um, and uh, uh, you know sampling uh, the product and we this year we have launched in the first half a new uh, a new variant of badam zafran as well we already have uh, strawberry and chocolate uh, in the marketplace uh, since last year so again good growth and it is margin accretive uh, and now i move to uh, the next slide which is uh, our omor portfolio uh, again we are uh, this is a, also margin accretive product in despite uh, the corona situation where you know people are less, uh, the the foot traffic in the stores is less we have placed more uh, assets in the market as assets in terms of uh, uh, freezers and tricycles ice cream trikes as we call them and uh, we have grown this uh, uh, also very uh, impressive and uh, we have had innovations fueling this growth as well we have also had the highest ever eat sales uh, and uh, you know, we make a, you, a, a quite a large uh, sale on eat on this we have uh, had a very successful communication which is with the consumer so in good news on on the omo front as well so moving forward to uh, add i think uh, it's always a good idea ice cream uh, makes people have it happy and ice cream ads are always fun so let's let's uh, watch this ad <laughs> i think uh, because we are playing it uh, on the on the internet so it's a bit uh, the quality was a bit uh, you know off but, uh, you you've all probably seen that television it's a wonderful ad uh, so you know uh, 
these are the uh, new launches um, that we, we did at various price points. Uh, so uh, happy with these um, uh, new launches. And of course, uh, in the uh, uh, COVID situation, in-home consumption has also been targeted. We are trying to um, maximize ice cream sales. So these uh, uh, value-added uh, uh, in-home consumption tops uh, have also done very well. Uh, another ad, uh, so let's uh, let's watch another ad. Uh. So that's our dad like wow, but, uh, uh, let's talk about new channels as well so uh, you know we are we are under extraordinary uh, circumstances uh, you know it's uh, covid has uh, for the last year uh, more than almost two years actually now we're um, operating in a well one and a half year we're operating in a corona environment it's been very tough and we've always, always had to constantly innovate in terms of how we are able to get our product uh, to the consumer. So uh, this is something that we have uh, worked hard because we haven't let um, uh, you know this get into the way of uh, servicing the consumer requirements. And uh, we have worked on new channels as well. Uh, we worked on a number of e-commerce. Um, uh, um, you know, with a number of e-commerce partners trying to get a product in, and they, it's been very successful. Uh, we've grown e-commerce sales um, by 14 times, so um, uh, compared to last year. Uh, and we've also, uh, you know, also done a lot of digital advertising as people have been working more and more um, out of home and, uh, you know, having meetings on computer or, you know, uh, so a lot of digital um, uh, advertising has been, has landed on this. Um, moving uh, forward. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, the channels we have specially targeted, uh, given the situation uh, of sporadic lock lockdowns, sometimes total lockdowns, but we've uh, observed that uh, pharmacies, loose milk shops, Petromarts are always open. They, uh, because of the nature of uh, their business uh, and the government also allows them to remain open. So we have had in the first half uh, uh, for uh, both milk and ice cream, 107% uh, growth in pharmacy channel. Uh, in the loose milk, we have uh, uh, products, uh, we have 5% in the loose, uh, loose milk shops. Uh, we've also grown about 77% in the Petromart. So that's how we work to uh, overcome the challenges that have been facing us. Now let's move to the financial highlights. So um, uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, a revenue, uh, as you've seen the accounts, I'm sure. We have a 22% uh, growth in the first half over last year, same period. Uh, if you look at um, uh, the uh, quarter one, uh, that's an 18% growth, and quarter two is 26% growth. So um, these are, uh, you know, we're pretty happy. Uh, not, percent, but the growth uh, percentage has increased uh, uh, in quarter two versus uh, quarter one. Uh, so that's uh, that's something which is good, uh, and you know we did suffer in the. the quarter two last year we were you know the lockdown was very very strict at that point in time but we have uh, managed to uh, deliver even positive growth at that time um, as far as the PAT is concerned uh, we've had uh, almost a 400 uh, percent increase um, uh, versus uh, same period last year so uh, we are happy about that and uh, you know, the first half uh, EBIT of 1.4 billion, uh, sorry, from PAT of 1.4 billion. 
Uh, if you look only at the dairy segment, uh, you'll see that um, there's an 18% revenue growth and uh, a 55% uh, PAD growth. And uh, it's, it's uh, you know, it's just good. So, uh, ice cream. Uh, ice cream has uh, 20, 64% uh, first half uh, growth. Some of it is, uh, of course, because last year's drop down was very strict. But of course, you know, I think even without that, this is an impressive growth. These are impressive um, numbers for Q1 and Q2 for ice cream. This is our highest number ever um, uh, for the company. And uh, for PAD, we have delivered almost 200 million in the first half. Uh, which is a 500 percent so uh, thank you very much uh, I've gone over this fairly quickly because i think questions are important and you know we, we are here to answer um, whatever questions you have whatever um, uh, you know listen to your concerns and ideas that you have and you know exchange of ideas i think is always good and uh, uh, it can help us uh, and um, you know better a business and maybe it can help you understand a business a little more so uh, if you have any questions uh, let me know uh, are we taking live questions or are we taking on the chat on the chat That's okay so if you could uh, uh, write down your question on the chat um, you know the, uh, Muhammad Taha uh, has raised their hand and Zubair Saab So can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Tahasa, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had uh, four, five questions. Uh, if you could please address them. Uh, so uh, let's first, take them one by one. Yeah. Okay, sure. Firstly, uh, can you provide a cup of the revenue growth in terms of price and volume uh, that you've achieved in the latest quarter? Hello. Uh, sorry, please. Uh, can you uh, ask the question again? I will bit uh, uh, some details. Yeah, uh, break down between. Yeah, break up between the price increase and the volume increase. Uh, you have achieved around uh, twenty six percent growth in the quarter in revenues. So, I'm just wondering what was uh, the price and the volume contribution in that. Uh, you didn't get the question. Sorry, did you hear it? Uh, did you hear my answer? No, sir. I couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry about that. So the volume increase is around uh, 7% and the rest is uh, a mix improvement because as you can price improvement. As you can see, uh, it also has certain, uh, played a part because the value added uh, categories have increased a lot. So it's um, a 7% volume and the rest is a mix and price. Okay. Uh, about the gross margins, as well, they have significantly improved since last year. Uh, around 2 to 3% gross margin have improved in the first half of this year, or still last year. So this is despite the fact of increasing inputs, uh, basically the raw milk price has increased, MP price has increased, and palm oil price has also increased. So despite all that, you have managed to achieve this gross margin improvement. So could you point out the factors which has led to this improvement? Yes. I would say uh, there are three factors equally responsible. And uh, uh, the first one, of course, is the fact that we have a volume increase and there's better uh, cost absorption. The second, uh, we have managed to grow our uh, mix. Um, uh, you know, we have managed to improve our mix by growing the value added segments uh, like cream, like uh, flavored milk, like uh, Omo ice cream. And the third is that we have managed to land the pricing on a I think both, all three have equal contributions. Okay. So uh, you mentioned the cream and the flavored milk. So these are relatively new products. Could you? 
currently at? Uh, well, there, there would be um, uh, around, um, you know, uh, 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 cream is not that new. Okay. Cream is not that new. We've had cream for a number of years, but what we have managed to do recently is really uh, grow it uh, very fast uh, in over the last two years. So I would say all uh, cream and flavored milk together would be about uh, less than 5% right now. And um, but they they have managed to come up very fast. Uh, I would say, if, you know, if you asked me two years ago, I would have said the portfolio was about two percent. Okay. And sir, uh, just can you point about point out the sustainability of these margins going forward as well? Can we expect improvement? Right. Uh, okay. Uh, Although I don't like to make uh, you know forward-looking statement, but because this is an analysis briefing and everybody uh, gets the same information, so I would um, just uh, um, uh, a certain uh, you know uh, caution uh, how to look at the margins and the numbers. Uh, we have um, seasonality in this business. Uh, so, uh, and uh, you know, people who have been covering our company for a uh, number of years are aware that the first half, uh, you know, milk price is very, uh, very, very uh, economical versus the second half where it, uh, you know, there is a uh, flush season in the first half and then they have a lean season how we buy milk. So, uh, from that point of view, uh, you know, um, so be, be a bit uh, sort of careful, look at the past years as well for your. Uh, uh, as far as um, uh, taking the uh, uh, margins forward, I would just like to say this is the uh, um, uh, milk business uh, by large as we speak now. Uh, so uh, we have come to a level, we will come to a milk a margin level where, you know, it will be optimal. And we uh, then... Uh, you know, whatever increase that happens in the gross margin area will be because of the value added products that we bring. So, uh, what one shouldn't expect is that we are going to um, you know, increase the uh, price of milk and make it more uh, pricey and more expensive. Remember, it's milk. And, uh, you know, we can't outpace ourselves on this. So, Again, the word of caution would be uh, uh, please don't look at the trajectory of the margin increase. Uh, do assume that we will uh, stabilize the margin at and we will also but on a positive side do assume that we will increase the in, inshallah, inshallah the, the mix improve the mix and increase the uh, portion of the value added products with higher margin but of course because you start from a low base it, it takes okay okay sir uh, so basically the, the last question uh value add product is uh, certainly a very small amount currently of your revenue the major business uh, would be alpers and the tarang so could you towards that side how much would they be trading at currently uh, so I, I, I you know i'm not going to uh, talk about these uh, uh, these but you know this is uh, uh, information that will be uh, you know, it will hurt us in terms of, uh, you know, competition, finding out about our margins. So if, if you excuse me, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just have to take this direction. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Zubair Sahib, I think, has raised his hand. Salaam alaikum. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I was looking at uh, the gross margins of uh, Engro Foods a couple of years back. Uh, and uh, we've seen that these gross margins have tended to be uh, prior to 2016 or 17 level. These have been quite sustainable uh, north of 20 to 22%. Now, I also attended the uh, analyst briefing of the foods uh, and uh, I heard loud and clear Sir Prasab saying that they, uh, FFBL, sorry, in which he pointed about our Fuji Foods that he thinks that the margins could uh, revert back to 2022 or percent on a sustainable basis. 
uh, first question is that what's your outlook on this? Do you think that uh, I understand the seasonality bit in the first half, but do you think we sustainably uh, on the uh, above 20 to 22 percent for space length? Beena? This is the first question. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to clarify this. So, uh, uh, what, uh, what was the takeout from the 4G briefing? Sarpras Sahib ne kya farmaya? Sarpras Sahib ne farmaya tha ke jo hai margin 16 aur 17 ki beech se pehle 20-22 feesat ki range mein gross margins rete te saal ke. So, unka ye khayal tha ki ye gross margins jo hai na wo 20-22 feesat ki range ke andar sustainably rahenge. Uh, uh, industry revert back कर जाएगी उन मार्जिन आपका industry के बारे में क्या आप यही optimism share करते हो Iceland कंपनी के बारे में भी यही optimism share करती है पुराने sure. levels पर आओ understood understood अच्छा इसमें मेरा मेरा point of view थोड़ा सा उनसे different है with respect वो पांडा वे goal they were different mix of products. So they are selling uh, butter, they are selling cheese, uh, and you know, uh, they are selling uh, uh, Noorpur milk as well. Uh, so, uh, different Lekin on an industry basis, I don't think. Uh, I think uh, you know you you'll get to the percent level if you increase your value added for for you. जो सोलह सोलह में रिजल्ट आते थे बीस पाइस वो भी अगर आप ज़्यादा पीछे जाइएगा तो वो इतने हाई नहीं थे वो तीन साल आपको हाई मार्जिन याद रहोगे आए थे at that point in time uh, you know, the uh, contribution of tea whitener was large in the dairy industry. Uh, and, and also, the margins of tea whitener were pretty high because international SMT prices were very low. Now, what have two things have happened. Tea whitener has shrunk as a category. T Whitener uh, is only maybe 30% of what it was in 2016 as an industry. So costs have gone up for T Whitener. International protein prices or SMP prices are about uh, two and a half times what they were in 2015, 2016, 2020. And uh, the other thing is that regulatory duty has been imported. And the foreign exchange has been imported. So, wo margin, so aap, aur, aap, pricing ka ek limit hota hai for tea whitener because if you make it more expensive than milk, then nobody is going to buy. So, so, wo mera khayal, achha, so tea whitener is uh, now instead of a high margin value added product, it has moved into a low margin product. And the contribution, of course, has also shrunk, which is also in a way a good thing because now low margin. So, mira, mira, uh, uh, ye ke, uh, you know, it's not going to be sustained uh, area unless you increase your mix, improve your mix, more cheese, more butter. Now, now, my second question is related to the answer that you have. Uh, in I think Peace Land Bina is almost taken over the management five years ago, approximately a bit here and there. But we yes. haven't seen the kind of uh, roles that we were expecting from the company of an international stature. So, what has been the reason was barring a few alterations in your product mix, the ice cream was pretty much there. Um, uh, flavored milk probably would be a category and uh, cream. So why haven't we seen the kind of product rollouts that we have seen from other companies uh, in the same time frame? Though they are pretty small in nature, foods obviously has been on a loss-making trajectory, but they have introduced few products of flavor. Uh, we've seen Rema introduced a few products. What is barring Friesland Campina from introducing 
cheese and butter and a few other products. Excellent. So it's the question that we discuss every day. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of uh, improvements that happened uh, because of the coming in of President uh, Campina. You know, some of the reports are front facing, like new launches, new products. Improvements are, uh, you know, in the background. And, uh, you know, you see them in terms of increased sales, increased um, profit, increased margins. Egg uh, backdrop. To a big uh, T Whitener business, which was profitable, uh, hugely profitable, uh, a value added firm. Aajkal ham green ko value added kare hain, aur flour mill ko value added kare hain. Uske bhi similar margins hote hain. So, ab wo wo pura lost, you know, we lost. We are about uh, one fifth of that uh, in terms of volume and margin. We chala gaye. So, usko humne offset kiya in terms of uh, better cost management, better uh, procurement, better processes, taking cost out of the supply chain. This all came from the Friesland uh, area, uh, and you know uh, we we got a lot of benefit because of their their um, uh, knowledge, their experience in other countries. So, ye ek cheez, uh, to hum recognize karte as uh, people who have been here from the Anglo time, you know, ye move change dekha. Dusra ye ki, you're absolutely right, ek hota hai front facing so, aap bhi uh, in terms of uh, new products. Uh, humne ye flavored milk bhi uh, launch here uh, and uh, usse pehle humne uh, full cream milk powder launch here, all first term, which I talked to uh, about in the year before last. Uh, we've also launched uh, Alpers uh, Procal, which is a low fat, uh, high protein um, um, milk. Uh, we've also launched Tarang Tea Whitening Powder. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, uh, Alpers Cream had, was a very low uh, volume product. It has uh, really grown many times in the last two or three years because of a huge improvement in quality. It's a wonderful product, you know, this cream. And uh, also, a court may have to eat where uh, Friesland, uh, uh, which is the sales area, unlike, uh, you know, uh, what um, other, uh, uh, some people who are, uh, you know, not as uh, they don't realize how much um, uh, expertise execution. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of experience, um, you know, making a, how to make your product available, how to make it move on the shelves, how to do merchandising, a lot of experience uh, and benefit of that from Friesen. Now, uh, you know, I know your question is not fully answered yet. But I think there, are, there, are number of, there are a number of products still in the pipeline. And, okay. and, you know, we were managing a change in terms of the portfolio where a large portion of our portfolio, if you recall, Tarang, almost, you know, uh, reduced rapidly. So we managed to grow. Uh, we are growing all first, you know, at a very fast, fast rate, rate to counter that. We've been over the last three years. We've also uh, done a lot of improvements in the processes. We managed to introduce some new products and we have an innovation pipeline, which is still very full. Uh, and you, you know, so what we don't want to do is over overdo the innovation. Uh, we want to do innovations which make an impact, which are here to stay, uh, not small of innovation. Yeah. So I understand, but my, uh, don't get me. Uh, I sure. was looking at top line for uh, CY15, and that sums up to 50 million rupees. And the half year top line for CY21 uh, is. Uh, Half of 2.25 billion, so it's all, still on board. Top line was five or six years ago. Uh, so yeah, no, there is an implement, to, uh, but and the second part is that we've seen competitors like Fuji Food uh, relaunching their butter segment in tubs. Uh, they have come out with cheese of late, they are coming with few other products, so they are still not profitable, and the size is many. Uh, my 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 only thought about Friesland might be there, but 
the rollout has not been that swift. Okay, so now point... I'm going to recap. I'm going to recap a number of things I said. So a large portion of our portfolio. Uh, so in 2015, uh, let's say, uh, Tarang was about 55 percent of our sales. Okay. And that, that whole tea whitening, um, uh, you know, category as a whole for the industry, tea whitening, that is not there anymore. It's very small. It's one fifth of what it was. So, uh, you know, what the, point, the category sorry. disappeared. Please hear me. So the category yeah. disappeared. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we have managed to build the other products to replace that. The category as a whole has lost its safety in terms of, uh, you know, the consumer attractiveness because of two or three reasons that I uh, mentioned. Now I'm going to say those again. So one was that the zero rating was taken away, which added a cost of about six to seven rupees per liter. The fact that uh, a regulatory duty was imposed on the import of skim milk powder. And the third was that uh, skim milk powder itself became in dollar terms two and a half times what it was in that uh, very low uh, price period of 20 uh, Of course, change rate. So now that category does not exist for the whole industry as it used to at that point in time. So the industry had to move on and they did. And, you know, a lot of um, uh, conversion has happened in terms of growing the uh, milk, um, uh, all birds milk. Uh, and yes, um, you know, there are, there are new launches which are coming in. In the food area, um, the West up, uh, you know, it's a, it's a slow burn sometimes when you introduce a new product. Sometimes it takes uh, years to gather the momentum and to... So we are introducing, we have introduced the full cream milk powder. We've ramped up the cream where it is really a big part and we have ramped up ice cream. So it's, it is a decision of where to direct your money and what to invest in. And there are, as there are more innovation in the pipeline right now, the first two years, we were consolidating, managing the uh, tarang uh, almost uh, decline into uh, the ground. And we, I think we have managed to do that well. And you will see better in the future as well, inshallah. Thank you so much. It was very well explained on the uh, all out of the uh, tea whitener segment. Thank you so much. I, my pleasure, sir. I think there is a written question as well. Um, so... There is a question on the average yield per animals of as compared to uh, uh, the national of uh, uh, four to five uh, liters. So, you know, uh, uh, we have found that when we train farmers uh, by through, through you know, uh, hygiene, cleanliness, and, uh, you know, uh, putting the animal under, uh, giving the animal um, uh, uh, adequate water. Uh, we are able to move this from uh, the 5 liter area to the 10 liter area. But, you know, it's a, it's a struggle because, uh, you know, how much can individual companies do? It's a large um, uh, country. There are many farmers. And there is also a very fragmented supply uh, chain. So some farmers are four or five cows uh, that we are dealing with. Uh, so, you know, it is a first company, whether it's uh, Friesland Campina or uh, Nestle or, or, or the dairy industry getting together. We can do, do some training, uh, but, um, uh, you know, we are going to be making a significant impact and the government does uh, a better job as well. And we are working with the government on this as well. Then this area. Having said our own farm, our own farm has a, 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 a about 27 uh, liters per, per, per annum. So, uh, you know, that's uh, that's where we bring the farmers in, uh, the farmers we train them. Uh, because uh, you're not going to get to 20 um, without uh, changing the genetic profile. So, uh, but you know, simple, simple uh, interventions can.
if I move to uh, the next question. Mm. So, uh, okay. okay. There's a question from uh, Amir Hamza from Taurus Securities. Explain how uh, zero rating regime works for the dairy sector. So I, I'll, I'll do that. I mean, it's worth uh, spending some time on that. Uh, Uh, so, uh, you know how it was, basically there are three regimes um, uh, or, or in sales tax. One is the exempt regime, uh, which is, uh, uh, of course, the main regime is the value added uh, tax regime, which is uh, the sales taxable. So what happens is that you pay tax on the output of the finished product and the input tax you can adjust before. The second is the exempt regime where uh, we, there is no sales tax on the final product. And, uh, you know, the input tax is, uh, is very much uh, part of uh, your cost. So it becomes part of your cost. You can't do nothing about it. Then there's a zero rating, uh, regime where there is no um, tax on the, out, on the finished product. But the input taxes you can claim as a refund. So that's the three regimes that are existing. If I move to the next question, uh, which is from uh, Mustafa Saab, when are we expecting cheese and butter? Uh, I can't reveal uh, the next uh, launches, but uh, just I just want to say that we are, uh, you know, we are committed to uh, being in the area of um, value added products we are committed to having uh, to uh, to innovating we are committing to innovating in a way which is sustainable and makes impact uh, not you know once of innovation so we, we we make sure that we are can invest into a category or new product and then we bring it in and we uh, support it fully uh, so uh, innovations will definitely come um, can't give you a date uh, because of competitive reasons but innovations will come and they'll be value added and sustained in charge okay uh, so uh, what was the third factor for improvement other than volume and mix the pricing and uh, that was pricing. And the other one question is, Kazim Fidani Saab ne badi pehle sawal pucha tha. As per your company guidance, company won't be passing to zero. Uh, it will be investing. Okay. Uh, there is no specific guidance uh, like that. Uh, okay. Uh, I haven't given a guidance. But, uh, you know, how much is going to be passed on to the consumer or how much uh, is going to be invested. But definitely it gives us a room to invest. I think, you know, how, you know, it's my view that how do we use this name uh, that the government is, you know, and the discussion we've had with the government as well. The idea is to increase the government revenue and make it you know, they are going to suffer because they are going to zero rating reaching for us. So how do we do that? The idea is to grow the volume and to grow, uh, to increase the conversion from um, loose milk to the uh, value to the uh, to the formal sector. Uh, and we, you know, our asset will uh, compensate the government for this within the two years. And we, from then on, we will grow it to a certain, uh, such an extent that they, it will be uh, a positive outlook for them and they will uh, be happy about it. They continue to provide us zero rating. So, um, uh, you know, uh, so don't, please don't call it guidance. Uh, it's, it's my view uh, that uh, uh, investing in conversion is a better uh, way uh, than dropping the price and, uh, you know, so, you know, it's a more sustainable long term. First, um, there may be some things which are come to pricing as well. So I haven't given you an exact breakdown. Okay. Uh, will you share? 
Uh, what is the next question uh, that I will take? Uh, um, what is the outlook on milk prices, both raw and packaged milk? Yeah. So, you know, um, last year, I think uh, milk prices increased by about, um, uh, you know, almost 16, 17%, and as in this year. Um, is, uh, you know, uh, international commodity uh, costs. And, uh, you know, we have had to uh, buy milk, which is uh, expensive. Um, I think there will be some stabilization in the near future, hopefully. Um, but it depends a lot on the international commodity prices. That's an area to watch out for. So if you think that the commodity costs will continue to go into the, into the sky, then yeah, it, milk is also going to be interested. Uh, but uh, the view is it's going to stabilize for you know in a few months, and because it's it's not really that sustainable uh, right now. Uh, if it continues to grow, of course, the uh, price will have to go up as well. Uh, so cattle herd, yes, um, that's uh, what percentage uh, of raw milk do we buy? Uh, we, buy we buy about 7% of our requirement. We've got about 5,000 animals uh, there. Uh, okay, what is the market size? Uh, okay, uh, we'll come back to you on that. I think uh, it's uh, market size probably... Uh, yeah, let me uh, work on that. I'll not, I don't have the answer right now on that. Um, yeah, devaluation. Yeah, well, your uh, milk is the biggest uh, uh, impactor, you know, because of the input costs. So that's where the, uh, you know, prices go up. Uh, because the input cost for farms go up, soya and everything, you know, uh, corn. So these are these are the you know utilities they all go uh, so uh, that's how our devaluation impacts us. Okay, so uh, any 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 other question that we can take? Um, well, actually, you can uh, you can look at the ice cream and um, uh, uh, milk uh, from our accounts because there is segment reporting, so you can uh, look at that. And you will see what portion is sales from ice cream and what is the milk. Um, So, uh, Sabina, uh, stands, uh, you know, I, I, we talked about uh, what portion, uh, whether, you know, we, we talked about UHT. We, we talked about the fact that we are investing now into conversion. So, I'm not any guidance on what the margin is going to go up and what is going to be reinvested into growth. Margin will obviously go up whether it's growth or it's uh, to, uh, you know, passing it on. So, uh, so let's, uh, I think this, uh, it's a bit of a simplistic equation, which uh, I, I won't be able to tackle at this point in time. Okay. So uh, any any further questions, if you wish, um, you know, you can raise your hand. Um, I'm available. There, there are some questions related to our, you know, accounts, which are, um, you know, which are not going to make sense if I tell you the answer because, uh, you know, there are some, they're not related to the accounts per, uh, per se, but are competitively sensitive. So, um, how much do I buy my milk at? You know, what do I pay to a supplier? These are not things that I.
I think will be beneficial if even if I share, but it can hurt the company. So uh, yes, definitely future capex. That's an excellent question. Uh, we are going to invest into conversion. They're going to do capital expenditure, uh, and there is going to be growth. In, uh, I pray that we um, grow and we invest into. We have always been investing into, uh, you know, improvement capital expenditure, into, uh, you know, uh, efficiencies, but uh, we will look forward to investing into growth as well. We have invested a lot in the ice cream area as a, as a we are placing assets every year uh, in the marketplace. Uh, we have uh, done the bottlenecking uh, at various places uh, in the plants. And uh, we have also invested in the past in the milk procurement area, the receptions. Uh, we will continue to. Uh, okay, so uh, you know, um, my question is about chemical part. So, uh, just uh, rather than answering it in that simple way, what percentage of SMP is consumed? Well, I don't know how to uh, answer that. Let me just say that uh, skim milk imported is only for tea whiteness, which is not, um, uh, uh, you know, a product which is designed to give nutrition. Um, it's the category which is designed to give you a wonderful cup of tea. Uh, for all purpose, uh, this is pure local fresh milk that we and that is the main um, source of protein that we uh, procure most. About 70%, 80% of our cost uh, is uh, fresh in reserve. So, skim milk powder is only for tea whitener. It's a smaller category, it's pretty small. Right? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, capital expenditure for the first half of 2021 is what I can talk about. And uh, you know, so there's a question on the capital expenditure for 2021. I can talk only to the extent of the first half. And uh, uh, in that, uh, you know, uh, what we have done is we have invested into freezer cabinets. We have invested into uh, generator sets for um, uh, our milk collection areas. And uh, we have uh, done the bottlenecking in the plants, uh, and there's uh, that sort of. Uh, full cream milk powder contribution is uh, now pretty small, but as I said, it's a slow burn. I won't be giving you an exact uh, number on that. Uh, so it's uh, developing. And it's a wonderful product. If you if you try it, please do. If you haven't tried it, do. Uh, we we buy our um, skim milk powder from mostly from uh, international sources, uh, internationally uh, cleared. Um, supplies, uh, the source, uh, you know, is either internationally accredited in terms of quality and, um, uh, you know, the safety standards. So the reason for the growth in ice cream uh, revenue, we have, um, I'll, I'll uh, say it again, it was in the slide that uh, we have invested into uh, the equity uh, branding. Um, it's been very successful. Uh, we've also asked uh, to alternate channels like e-commerce uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of our advertising has also been very digital, so we've kept up with the trends. We've also launched new products which are very successful, new innovation as a new excitement has come into the category. And we've also placed more assets in the, you know, uh, 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 the shelf for ice cream is the freezer cabinet, and that's what we are placing, uh, you know, more and more growth is happening because of that. So I guess um, it seems that uh, we've answered a lot of questions. Okay. Um,
the size of the herd it was about 5000 animals and you will see Thank you very much for being here. 